Okay, good morning everyone. Um, a little bit of a different video this morning. Uh, we're going to be talking about our Alice Springs road trip. So uh, we've posted up a number of videos from that road trip and I'll include a link to that below or somewhere up here or wherever it's going to pop up. Um, and we got a lot of questions and uh, feedback on uh, both YouTube comments, social media and the like. So we responded to a lot of those uh, uh, as they came up, but I thought that I'd make a quick video just pulling together uh, some of those questions um, and just respond to those um, uh, in a video so they're all in one place. Uh, so look, let's get straight into it. So the first question we got was, and I'm I'm an optimist, so I'll start with the uh, the uh, negative for the the lower ones first, and then we'll work our way up. So. Uh, the first one was, what was the low light of the trip? Um, so look, I think that uh, for me, the the low light was the very last day uh, in Dunmara when I forgot to change the, um, the charging level on the car, uh, only because it was just a silly mistake on my part and it... Um, you know, delayed me about an hour, and then that hour sort of knocked on all day, so that I, I, I then was um, later than I wanted to be getting home. So uh, it was just irritating, and it was just a silly, just a rookie mistake on my part. But like I think I said in the video, and I think it, it would have been, um, so day seven of the video, which I think was sort of um, episode 21 or something on our channel, um, in the scheme of things, not a big cost. Like, no one was hurt. It was only a time a time thing but I was sort of kicking myself that I'd made a such a silly mistake um I suppose the only other one was and this is a, a negative and a positive was breaking the GoPro so I had a GoPro mounted on the car I think maybe that was day three or something like that which was probably episode 17 or something um yeah and it fell off and and broken at the time I was like oh no because I was down you know I was down a camera then for the rest of the trip uh but um, after getting back and replacing the lens cover on the GoPro, it's good. It's as good as new, apart from a few scratches. So it shows you how robust they are. So that's the positive side of it. Um, uh, then, of course, the flip side then is the highlights of the trip. So uh, for me, the, one of the real highlights was the Henley on Todd. Um, that's a really iconic event in Alice Springs. I've never been to it before and combine that with the fact that we had uh, um, EV, uh, EVs in, in the parade and, uh, and, our, and our car on display for people to come and have a look at was kind of the best of both worlds. So it was a really excellent, excellent day. Um, I think that was sort of day four on, uh, you know, if you're looking at our playlist or anything like that, I think that was day four shows a bit of that Henley on Todd day. But that was, yeah, really, really great event and uh, really thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm a big fan of Alice Springs, uh, uh, you know, at the best of times. I, I, I love that area. Central Australia has just got so much to see and it's a brilliant place. Uh, so to see the Henley on Todd was awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... Other real highlights was the Devil's Marbles Hotel. This is like a little hotel that's sort of a hundred and I think it's about 116, 120 kilometres, just going off memory here, uh, south of uh, Tennant Creek, so on the way to Alice Springs. And that, like, it's just a little oasis in the middle of nowhere. I, j I just love that place. I love finding these little spots um, sort of off the beaten track, and that was a real highlight. The You know, the great little restaurant, friendly staff. I met a heap of lovely people who were really interested in uh, in the car which was um uh, surprising but fun uh, nice cold beer at the end of the day and not a lot more to uh, to want um <clears throat> and i think the other real highlight for me was uh the henley on todd it wasn't just me going from darwin to alice springs for that event there was uh you know i think another five uh evs had come from around australia so uh Sydney up to the east coast and Sydney and Melbourne and Adelaide around and up up the centre so there'd be a number of people made uh, pretty substantial trips to get there as well so meeting other um, uh, Australian Electric Vehicle Association and Tesla Owners Club of Australia members and uh, EV enthusiasts generally was was a real highlight for me some of those people I'd um, 
spoken to on the phone before or, uh, you know, on email and, and, and other social media and things, but not met in person. So that was uh, was really brilliant. I really, really enjoyed meeting all those people. Um, <clears throat> one of the other questions was how do we find places to charge? So uh, Australia, I think the de facto standard in Australia is plug share. So um, all of our identification of places to charge is on plug share. Um, I'll include a couple of screenshots here. Uh, it's just a really great app. Uh, you can um, see where where all the charging places are. You can see um, information on what plugs are there and charge rates, um, uh, check-ins from other drivers and their experiences of the place. So it, it's a really great resource and it's our go-to app for finding charging places. And the other one was, how do we charge? Well, we, for that trip and pretty much, well, actually all our trips, we use the Juice Booster 2. We carry the Tesla UMC as a backup, uh, but the Juice Booster 2 is our sort of go-to charger for our car. Uh, again, I'll put a link um, here somewhere uh, to a video we've done comparing the Juice Booster 2 and the Tesla uh, UMC, and you can see why we use the uh, Juice Booster for our um, charging while we're on the road. Uh, another question was, what average speed do we drive? Uh, in the Northern Territory, our speed limit generally in sort of open road areas is 130 kilometres an hour. Uh, so some of the legs we drove at around about that, just to sort of uh, get somewhere a little bit earlier in the day. And if, if, if it's going to be an overnight charge over uh, after that, you can drive a bit quicker. Um, <clears throat> earlier on in the day before our first charge we'll probably drive somewhere between 90 and 100 kilometers an hour i think i said in one of the comments seems to be the real sweet spot for our car in terms of watt hours per kilometer uh in terms of efficiency um uh, which then has got a uh, an effect at the end about how long it's going to take you to charge so there's a sweet spot there between you know going faster and getting there earlier but then having to charge longer um, and or you know conserving a bit of energy and having a shorter charging stop so yeah generally like I said the second leg around about that 130 kilometers an hour mark but before that between 90 and 100 um, how long did it take to get there so we did it in uh, two and a half days uh, so this is um, I think it's about 15 16 somewhere between 15 and 1600 uh, kilometers uh, look, really, we could have done it in two days if we'd wanted to, um, but there are a couple of spots we wanted to stop and overnight. Uh, Dunmara Wayside Inn had put in a electric vehicle charging point, so we wanted to support them, uh, and the same thing with the Devil's Marbles Hotel. So we made sure we really build the, built the trip around those couple of charging stops. Um, so, yeah, two, two and a half days. Um now, uh, this question came up as we talked about slipstreaming, so sort of getting in behind uh, caravans or trucks or road trains and things like that to improve your efficiency. And we've got a question that said, what was the estimated percentage uh, in improved efficiency we got through slipstreaming? Um, I put on there, it's it's about 20 to 30 watt hours per kilometre. Um that you get in terms of efficiency. But again, there's a real trade-off in terms of risk. So uh, in the Northern Territory, our roads are really good, actually. We have great roads. And definitely those open roads were really great. <clears throat> but there's a lot of trucks on those roads and caravans and things. So invariably, there's rocks on the road and things like that. So, you know, the risk is you might be right behind another, uh, like a caravan or a truck, uh, sort of slipstreaming to try to get better efficiency, you really run the risk of having rocks flick up into the car. So I did have, I def, I, I, I've got a bit of a stone chip in the bonnet now from a rock flicking up from a truck. So I didn't sort of sit behind trucks too much. After that, I'd tend to sit behind caravans. They're generally traveling a bit slower. They're not flicking up. Don't seem to be anyway flicking up uh, sort of debris off the road uh, and you get a better sort of trade-off there. So, yeah, there's a there's a risk-reward um, uh, risk reward to be considered there. Um, so our top tips was another question. So what are our top tips for sort of EV uh, road trips in Australia? 
Uh, so one of them is download your maps. So have another app or something on your phone where you can take maps offline. Uh, I think you probably would have seen on our day, day one of the video, so that um, I think it's episode 15 or something like that. Sorry if I'm getting these wrong. I'll Whatever I get wrong, I'll put up on the screen. Um, yeah, we had a situation there where we didn't have any mobile phone uh, connectivity, so we couldn't get the maps. Uh, and uh, where our navigation was telling us Dunmara was, wasn't right, uh, and ended up being out by about 35 kilometres. And I've since um, put in a correction to, to Google Maps and they've fixed that. Um, but because we had no data, we couldn't, couldn't confirm anything uh, so yeah having your maps on a on some sort of app uh, uh, offline is uh, is a tip for us uh, the other one particularly in Australia don't assume you're going to have mobile voice or data um, we found on a lot of our road trips in fact the vast majority of the time there's no mobile phone or data uh, so that means you're operating offline a lot of the time so build your travel with that in mind so you know offline maps if you've got um, uh, the other one I had a bit of trip planning uh, in the cloud don't assume that you're going to be able to connect to it so have stuff um, offline even in terms of sort of ringing people in the evening to let them know that you've arrived you know you need need to do a bit of planning there um, uh, carry water um, particularly uh, in Australia it can be pretty hot at different times of the year um, if you're going on a road trip there's a fair bit of extra weight in water that you've got to carry depending on how much you're going to carry so you know 20 we'll have a, a 10 litre and a 20 litre container that's 10 and 20 kilos but the first thing you're going to notice if you have a problem and you're uh, stuck out on the open road somewhere um, generally other cars will come along but there might only be a few a day so you want to make sure you've got plenty of water there um, so you're not uh, getting into any strife and getting thirsty or worse um, uh, the other one was uh, for us uh, we carry a spare tire and a jack and some jacking plates and things like that um, my point around that is Whatever it is you're going to carry, make sure you know how to use it. So if it's a you know spare tire and a jack and all those sorts of things, know how to use it for your car. Um, electric vehicles can be pretty heavy, lots of weight in the battery pack and things like that. Uh, there's sometimes specific uh, jack mode you have to go in on your apps. Just know how to know how that all works and and have practiced it you know a couple of times before you hit the road. Um, look, I think that's. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, pretty much everything. A couple of other little things. Uh, we did a road trip a little while ago to Mataranka, uh, which we've got a video coming up on, so that's going to be really good. Uh, really looking forward to that. That that was a real surprise, Mataranka. There's um, lots of great stuff to see down there, and I think you'll uh, enjoy watching that video. Um, the last one's on subscribing. So, uh, Thank you very much to everyone who subscribes to this channel. We've got over 100 subscribers at the time we've made this video, which is amazing. Um, uh, YouTube sort of favours channels that have got more subscribers and more views and those sorts of things. So if you like the sort of videos that we're making and are enjoying that, please consider subscribing. More subscribers just means more people will get to see our content. Uh, likewise, if you want to be notified when we upload a video, there's a little bell thing down the bottom here somewhere that you can press. Uh, and also, don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Look, that's it uh, for today. Thanks very much for watching. We've got some great videos coming up that we're really looking forward to sharing with you. Until then, safe EV travels.